Alrighty, up next, we're going to be taking a look at jailbreaking Apple Mac's iPhone. It's going to be a 3G iPhone, and it's running software version 3.1.2. Now, if you don't have the latest version firmware running on your iPhone, you do want to make sure you either download it. The best way to do it would be to actually download the update firmware, which we'll show you in a few moments. It's the IPSW file that you want to update, and then we want to look at rebuilding it because... That way, we're not going to then update our baseband of our modem, which if we update it to the latest version, that then right now or currently stops us from opening up that phone to be used with other service providers. So one of the very, very powerful websites that you can go to for a lot of additional detailed information is the quickpound.com. As you can see, it's got a lot of detailed information there. And uh, let's just make sure you can see the URL. That's the URL. If you just go to the quickpound.com website, there's a lot of additional articles or links on the right-hand side. Now, when we look at jailbreaking an iPhone, we can use an Apple Mac, we can use a Windows system, we can use Black Rain, we can use uh, Pwn, QuickPwn, we can use Red Snow. There's multiple versions out there. And to be honest, one of the easiest methods would be to use Black Rain. However, you do need to be aware that there are certain pros and cons that you actually get out of using each of the different techniques. So for this demonstration, we're going to keep it to probably the one that takes the longest amount of time, but from my opinion, is one of the more reliable techniques. So, so make sure you download the latest files that you need, the IPSW files. If you're running the first version of the iPhone, you want to download the first version file there or the 3G, or the 3GS. And as I mentioned, you can be using Red Snow or 101 of the other techniques out there. There are other tutorials that actually take you through the details, even though this other tutorial, same website, covers jailbreaking an iPhone 3.1. This is using the Pwnage tool. That's a tool that I'm going to actually be utilizing because personally, I found it to be a lot more reliable. Now, there's also some updated news if we have a look at the blog.iphone-dev.org website. You can actually see there's updates on the firmware. If, if you had issues with uh, the firmware that was running uh, 04.26 baseband, your actual modem itself, well, then you could actually update that with the uh, Ultra Snow update, which you'll, you'll be looking at that example when we get to the running and updating and installing the applications or the custom apps on the iPhone. Now, first off, if we also now realize that the baseband version 05.11, that was the one that initially locked your uh, service provider into if you were using AT&T or you're using a T-Mobile, whoever it was in whatever country, we now actually can use the GeoHot, that uh, the GeoHot attack was using the AT plus the XM crash and uh, that injected uh, the attack so we could then use that attack to unlock the iphone and in this case again you want to keep yourselves updated with all these different websites that uh, are going to be very helpful to keeping you updated so uh, again you can actually download the latest versions of software here as well uh, we'll we'll just leave it at that because we've already downloaded the firmware as well as the software that we actually need so having said that, the first thing we now want to do is actually open up the Pwnage tool. And as you'll see, there's really no rocket science involved. All we have to do is basically click on the OK, and then you would select your yeah, iPhone that you're going to be said, yes, it's jailbreaking. Right firmware. If you do actually look at the file beneath that, that's going to give you the information based upon how or where any kind of error logs that's come out. And uh, what was funny is this firmware or the IPSW file was not the one I was using in the same directory that I have on my desktop. So uh, bear in mind that uh, you may have to ensure that you have all those three different files so things don't always work the way they exactly meant to. That was the firmware that I wanted to use, but as I mentioned, and as you can see, it's come up and said, well, hang on a second, that's not the firmware I want to be using. 
So if we want to double check, we can go back and say, all right, well, let's look at using the uh, 3GS. Which, so, uh, well, we click on um, the iPhone 3GS, we select next. That's also going to go out, look to see if it can find the right IPSW file. All right, so mine's come back and said it wants to use the one that I downloaded again. So if we look at um, the actual website from QuickPowan again, you can see the file names will actually be different based upon the actual software that it wants to use. Next, and it's now going to create that custom. And as you can see, we do have an iPhone 3G. We went through this before. So we're going to rebuild that IPSW file. And then we should be able to hopefully restore it with a bit of luck. So we've now got to the screen where it says, has your iPhone been pawned before? We'll select no. It does say if you're unsure, click no. So we'll select no. And uh, it's now telling us to turn off the device. Quick to follow these buttons. Which actually enters the phone into restore mode. So we need to prepare to hold the home button. We've got to hold that for 10 seconds. Release the power button. And if this is all good, we should be in recovery mode or restore mode. And there you go. So we'll select OK. As you can see, iTunes came up by saying, well, it's picked up a device that's uh, unknown and uh, we need to unplug and replug it in again. Select yes, we want to restore it. We'll select OK. And, well, let's hopefully just use the Alt Option key, select restore, and that works. So we don't have the right click there, folks. Obviously, iTunes also gets updated. So we've been able to now select on the custom restore file that we want to use, and we'll select open. That's then going to extract the software, and it will then apply the gel breaking to the actual phone. So uh, once it's finished extracting the software and it's gone through restoring it, we should be good to go with Cydia on the desktop, and we'll take you through what we can do once we've got the jailbroken phone successfully jailbreaked meaning we have Cydia on the desktop, and we'll look at then customizing the phone with all sorts of cool, excellent software packages. So it is now going through the preparation for the restore. I know it's been successfully jailbroken because when it booted, you should get a pineapple appear on the actual iPhone. And this is as it's going through the uh, different se uh, sessions or the different uh, processes. So this does say, you know, when it's preparing for the iPhone for restore, you should at some point see the, uh, the actual pineapple with the bite taken out the side. And then after that, you'll get the normal apple that comes up with uh, it being actually doing the restore. And this is where it says waiting for the iPhone. So you should have the apple with a bar that will show the progress at the bottom that's on your iPhone. And it's just about finished doing the uh, firmware restore. So we'll give it a few more seconds and uh, we should be good to go. Now, obviously I'm pausing it here so uh, you don't have to just watch the wonderful bars go up and down the screen. So mine's come back and I've selected just to uh, set it up as a new phone. And uh, once we've set up as a new phone, basically select done and uh, we should be complete. So all in all, we finished doing the jailbreak. What we want to do now is uh, look at in the next session, we are going to be running some of the applications that we're going to use to customize our iPhone for various different purposes.